Welcome back to another video on the channel. Hope everyone has had a fantastic time with Wimbledon so far. We have four brilliant quarterfinals lined up on the men's side of the draw with the big three all remaining. Yannick Sinner and Carlos Alcaraz are in action today before Novak Djokovic takes the court tomorrow in his quarterfinal against Alex Dimino. Just before I go into previewing and predicting these last eight matches, if you would subscribe to the channel, it would be greatly appreciated. I do hope to work in tennis media one day, and I use this channel to improve my skills, improve my knowledge of the sport, and it's a sport that I want to shine light on, and a sport that I love analysing and watching and giving my opinions on. So jumping into my last eight predictions and what will be four fantastic matchups. First off, looking at Carlos Alcaraz against the American Tommy Paul. And I think it's fair to say that Alcaraz certainly in patches hasn't looked his best in this tournament but we saw that last year as well his forehands looked a rather good time he's he's losing concentration which is some go two sets to one down against francis tiafo he lost five or six games in a row against ugo umber he's being brought regularly at times during this tournament which is just something that we're not used to seeing with alcaraz and i think you know it's hard to criticize someone that's 21 year old and a three-time grand slam champion and I just want to go on record and say that I think Alcaraz is, you know, an unbelievable tennis player. And he'll probably go down in 15, 20 years' time when he hangs up the racket as one of the greatest to, to play the sport. I think he's transformed the sport with the way he plays the game, how, you know, emotional and aggressive and brilliant to watch he is. I think he's going to be an insane champion and ambassador for the sport. I don't want to make a look out there and criticising him. But I think there's such high expectations and we've seen how good Alcaraz can be that when he isn't his best, then it's it's fair enough to, to call him out on that. And with that, we have seen glimpses of insane quality. You know, some of the tie breaks that he's played, the way he's played under pressure is showing why he's a champion. And he's a person that in this tournament, I think, is not scraping through, but playing about par and then producing his best in the important moments. We saw him under pressure against Tiafo and then he played a fantastic tie break and dominated the final set against Humbert. It was 5 5, love 30, and he turned it on and managed to close it out 7 5. So I don't think Alcaraz has been, you know, his best, but when he's needed to produce, he has. And that's a sign of a, of a champion. And I think it's worth pointing out that he was similar in this event last year. And then when he got to the quarterfinal stages and they're going really got tough. He destroyed Holger Runa and Daniel Medvedev and then beat Novak Djokovic over five sets in the final. So we've seen Alcaraz, you know, not play his best up until the quarterfinal stage, and then really turn it on, become clinical, produce his best, really focus his mind. And when he does that, he's much too good for the majority of people on the ATP tour. In this matchup, he will need to improve. You know, he's got so many games to get, go through, I think, Alcaraz. Um, but I'm expecting a really good clinical all-round performance today and I think you'll need that to defeat Tommy Paul who I'm going to move on to now. So Tommy Paul won Queens coming into Wimbledon which was fantastic preparation for him, get as many matches on grass, win a momentum, win another title and he's been brilliant up until this point, um, you know, reaching the last eight. He was very good against Bautista Gutt who, albeit is 36, but he's very tenacious, he's got great defence, he gets every ball back. But Tommy Paul used all his aggression, his great serve and his net play to win that one six two seven six six two and get off court, court very quickly, which is very important going into the latter stages of Grand Slams. I think Paul's a player that's improved over the last couple of years. He's in great form, he's full of confidence and he has also got a 2-2 two, two record on head-to-head -head against Alcaraz, so he's beaten him before. Um, he knows what to expect on the court from Alcaraz. Paul's all-round game is very strong. You know, he's got very few weaknesses. He's got power off the forehand, very consistent double-handed backhand. He's happy to rally from the back of the court when the points are extended. He's got a huge serve. He's great around the net. And I think if he plays his best, that he's very capable of winning this match. Um, I think when the quarterfinals came out and it looked like a Alcaraz Paul quarterfinal, that was the one where everyone looked at and said, you know, that's going to be Alcaraz's real test. And... I've mentioned I don't think we've seen the best smelt grass today. We're going to have to. I think he's going to have to play somewhere near his best to dethrone um, Tommy Paul on grass, who's playing better in this tournament so far, in my opinion. Albeit, I do think Alcaraz has still got a higher ceiling. You know, a three-time Grand Slam champion, defending champion at Wimbledon. 
if Alcaraz can come out and produce somewhere near his best, then he will have too much firepower and variety and core craft on the field for Tommy Paul. But and I think it's too early. It's too early to write off Carlos Alcaraz considering he's defending champion. So I'm going to edge towards Alcaraz in four sets. But if Alcaraz doesn't produce his best and Tommy Paul does, then I think we could have an upset on the cards. Moving on now to quarterfinal number two, Yannick Sinner against Daniel Medvedev. And this is a head-to-head that Medvedev initially dominated, going 6-0 up. The last five meetings, Yannick Sinner's won them all. So I guess you could say that Sinner's worked out how to play them, play him and also execute his game style um, on Medvedev. And I think so far, Sinner's been the best player in the men's draw. Um, he's had a pretty tough draw, you know, facing... Matteo Berrettini, a former finalist at Wimbledon, came through three tie breaks, which I think is great. Puts him in great stead going on to this tournament. The fact that he's won the tie break against Ben Shelton as well. He's producing his best in the biggest moments. Ben Shelton is a huge talent, but had not had a day off in around 15, 16 days, I believe. And that showed, you know, Sinner used all of his experience and quality and, you know, ball striking to power down um, Ben Shelton and won that match pretty easy in the end I think Yannick Sinner's got a great game for grass, he's technically excellent on pretty much every shot, he's got the backhand down the line which I feel is a very important shot at Wimbledon being able to change change the rally and put some more on the, on the back foot he flattens out the forehand very well, we know he's got a big serve, gets lots of unreturned first serves, I do think Sinner could do with improving around the net you know when he's up against a, an Alcaraz or a Djokovic where that's where the difference could be some real fine margins and tie breaks at the back end of the sets I don't think Sinek, Sin is the most clinical around the net I don't think he's got the greatest of hands when you see his net player points he wins around 65-70% which is good enough to beat players you know like a Ben Shelton or a Kestmanovic when you come up against an Alcaraz or a Djokovic um, in those matchy side moments you would like a little bit more consistent consistency and quality around the net in my opinion but it's very hard to criticize Yannick Sinner who's an unbelievable talent world number one I think Medvedev is a great matchup for Sinner on the grass I think Sinner's key in this one is to do the basics well if he serves and returns well looks to dictate points get inside the baseline as long as he executes his backhand and his forehand then I think he wins this one moving on to Medvedev now who's had some luck with the draw you know I don't think he's played anywhere near his best tennis so far but that's become normal when Medvedev plays on grass against Struff he threw the first set and you know Medvedev was in control from that point Dimitrov raced under a three love lead and then got injured which was very disappointing again for Grigor who was having a great tournament and he had to retire in the first set I do think it's fair to say that Medvedev's made improvements on the grass over the past couple of years, but not at a rate to beat a Yannick Sinner. I think to beat Sinner on grass, you need to have incredible ability when stepping in the court to hit clean winners and get Sinner on the back on the defensive, get him into the corners where he necessarily does want to attack from. Um, you also need to have very good net play and be able to attack the net and shorten the points and keep Sinner away from you know, rallying and using that consistent heavy ball striking to break down opponents. And Medvedev just doesn't have that. You know, Medvedev's not at home when he steps inside the court. He's not technically fantastic. He doesn't have great hands around the net. He doesn't like being around the net. And I think the fact that Sin has won the last five meetings, he's worked out how to play him. Um, you know, Medvedev will try to counter punch and defend. But I think, you know, you can do that and you can force errors and you can throw a variety up against players like Struff and, um, you know, Muller who aren't the best movers and are a little bit inconsistent and make unforced errors. Yannick Sinner doesn't, you know, he's got that sheer fighter power. He's ultra consistent. He's got a fantastic forehand and backhand. And I think the fact that if you look there, Medvedev lost his last eight matches against him, against Djokovic, Alcaraz and Sinner. All three have worked out how to play him. And I think, Medvedev needs to find a way of being a little bit more aggressive in these matchups and trying to put his authority on the match. I think just counter punching and defending and getting balls back in court is not going to be enough to beat three players of that quality. In terms of match prediction, I think Sin is much more comfortable on the grass than Medvedev. He's won the last five meetings across hard courts and grass and clay. And I think as long as he stays aggressive, does the basics well, I think he runs out a comfortable winner and wins this one in straight sets. 
Moving on now to Alex Dimino against Novak Djokovic. Starting with Novak Djokovic, I think was obviously a huge worry coming into the draw, how far he would get, having knee surgery just a month ago. Thankfully for the tennis world and Djokovic fans, he's, his movement seems to be improving match by match. I think, you know, last night he was very good against Runa, but I was disappointed by Runa's level. I thought he would give him a much bigger test. I think Runa really lacked belief. Um, he was too defensive. He allowed Djokovic to dictate rallies. Djokovic served and returned very well, as he always does. But I think Runa had to try and stamp his authority on the match a little bit more than just counter punch and defend. Um, and he allowed Djokovic to dominate and step inside the court. And when Djokovic does that and gains confidence, he's such a ruthless, fantastic player. And Djokovic was very clinical. Um, he was tactically superb last night. I felt shortening the points. He served great. And I think it's pretty absurd at the level that Djokovic is playing, given that he's 37 year old, underwent knee surgery a month ago. The fact that he's still dominating top 16 players like Holger Runa, who's 16 years younger in straight sets is such a testament to his ability and quality and consistency. I actually make Djokovic favourite to win the Wimbledon title now. I did have Alcaraz down as a pre-tournament favourite, but I just think with the way that Djokovic's draws opened up, um, you know, pre-Wimbledon, it looked like he was going to face Hubert Hurkacz, who was in great form, and then Alexander Zverev in the semi-final. But Hurkacz has gone out, and Zverev has also gone out. I think the fact Djokovic has won this title seven times the fact that the knee issues looks like it's getting better taught round by round. I think all these things make Djokovic a favourite now, particularly when you look at the fact that Alcaraz will have to face Sinner in the semi-final, which could be a war of attrition, whereas Djokovic has two good matchups against Domino and then Fritz or Mossetti in the semi-final. Talking about Alex Domino, it's his first Wimbledon quarter-final, which surprised me. I think you know, Domino is a part at home on the grass. He's a very, very good player. He's had a great grass court season. He defends very well. He's undoubtedly, in my opinion, the fastest man on the tour up there with Carlos Alcaraz. He counter punches incredibly well. He's got a good forehand, solid serve. Well, that's enough to beat Novak Djokovic is another matter. I think against Arthur Feast yesterday, he was very good. He counter punched fantastically well. He forced errors from Feast with his variation, his backhand slice, keeping the ball low and wide. But I think in this match that Dimonor needs to slightly change his tactics if he wants to have success. He needs to be aggressive where he can and step into the court. It's not really his game on grass, but you're not going to beat Djokovic just from counter punching and defending. You know, Arthur Face made lots of unforced errors yesterday that Djokovic just won't make. You know, if you allow Djokovic to step inside the court and he's falling in backhand and being in around the net, then he just dictates and hits so many clean winners that he runs away with games and matches and sets. Um, so I think Dimino needs to look to serve well, be aggressive on re return, particularly of second serve when he can step inside the court and try and bully Djokovic as much as he can um, from inside the baseline, which is such a tough job. But as I say, to have success in this one, you can't do it from just counter-punching, in my opinion. He does also have an injury worry, Alex Dimino. It looked like he rolled his ankle on the match point which was very unfortunate he looked in clear pain in his post-match interview as well so hopefully actually manages to step out on court and produce his best but that's no guarantee at the moment in terms of match prediction i think Djokovic's quality of serving and returning and aggression will be too much firepower for Dimino. Um, i'd like to see Dimino, as i've said switch up his tactics but that's not really his game style um, but i think Djokovic will ultimately have too much inside the court um, too much consistency and quality and precision for the player of Alex Domino's quality. With also the injury worry, I think it's going to even favour Djokovic more. So I'm going to go Novak Djokovic to win this one in three sets. Final quarter final is Taylor Fritz against Lorenzo Massetti. And Taylor Fritz won Eastbourne. He's then defeated Alexander Zverev in the last 16 from two sets to Love Down. And he has. Lorenzo Massetti to reach a first ever Wimbledon semi-final, which is a huge opportunity for him. These two met at Wimbledon in 2022 and Taylor Fritz won that matchup in straight sets. I think Taylor Fritz, he serves a huge weapon. He was only brought once yesterday by Alexander Zverev and Zverev, we know, has been in fantastic form, reaching the French Open final, winning in Rome. 
and getting to the last 16 of Wimbledon. So that's a huge feat for Taylor Fritz to turn that match around against a player that had such great winning momentum and we know how much of a great server Alexander Zverev is. The one-two punch is such a key player for Taylor Fritz and I think his backhand has improved so much over the last two years. You could argue that he's the most improved player over the last couple of years. I think the key for this one for Taylor Fritz is, is to be patient on return and as long as he picks the right balls to attack he should have too much firepower for Massetti. He's also had a lot less hours on court and I think the backhand battle will usually favour Taylor Fritz. I always favour a solid double hander over a single hander and I think Taylor Fritz is backhand. He very rarely misses it now. It's great to cross court. He actually won those exchanges yesterday against Alexander Zverev, who's got one of the best backhands on the tour. So I think Fritz will be looking to really dominate the backhand exchanges in this one against Massetti. Lorenzo Massetti defeated an exhausted Pericard yesterday, and I think you've got to give him credit for that performance. You know, Pericard had served over 100 aces coming into that match, but Massetti returned very well. He neutralised the serve. He absorbed the pace of Pericard's forehand, who was just letting rip on every ball and trying to shorten the points as much as possible. But I think Massetti, he offered variation. And, you know, Pericard was very guilty of overhitting. He was master of his own downfall almost. And Massetti didn't have to do a great deal to win that match. But he produced a few incredible backhand winners. I think it was his cleanest performance of the tournament so far, which would give him huge confidence going into his first ever Wimbledon quarter final. Ultimately, I think Fritz is up the consistent. Um, I don't think he'll make anywhere near the amount of unforced errors that Pericard made. So that negates a sort of variety of Massetti in a way. I think, as I mentioned, the backhand battle will heavily favour Taylor Fritz. It's much more solid and consistent than Massetti's, in my opinion. I think Massetti's only chance of winning this match is if he can be very creative with the slice and the drop shot and attack the net. I think if he gets into back if he gets into baseline exchanges, then Fritz will certainly outlast him and have too much firepower for him. Um and in terms of match prediction, I think Fritz is playing excellent tennis. Massetti has great core craft, he's brilliant to watch, but I don't think he'll have the consistency to trouble uh, Taylor Fritz. So I'm gonna predict Taylor Fritz to win that one in straight sets. So, there are my predictions. Um, if they all come off, we'll see Carlos Alcaraz take on Yannick Sinner in the semi final and Novak Djokovic take on Alex on Taylor Fritz. So, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, it will be greatly appreciated. Do also leave your comments for your predictions for the semi final for the quarter finals as well in the comments section below. I do always enjoy reading those. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next video.